Welcome back to DBC Weekly. This is episode 175. My name is Jason Ruppelding. I'm the broker of Buy and Sell DVC. I'm here with Scott Ferrioli. I'm the owner of DVC-Rental.com and BuyAndSellDVC.com. And today is June 12, 2024, which means your 11th month mark is going to be May 12, 2025. And the 7th month mark is January 12, 2025, which I'm guessing, I didn't look at the calendar beforehand, is probably close to Marathon Weekend. Probably. Probably. Well, it's so, sometime around there. I'm not sure exactly when, but sometime around there. Those uh, marathoners come in and they take over Disney World and they, they're they on the road at 2 a.m. And they're by 6 a.m. when it warms up, they've stripped all their clothes along the road. <laughs> um, that is true. <laughs> it's exactly what happens. I'll tell you, just for the, the clothes get picked up, they get Don't donated to the... So, no worries there. By the time, if you're not a marathoner and you roll up to the park, you do not see the clothes on the side of the road. But uh, that all happens before you arrive. It's like Expedition Everest. You, know, you go up there and sometimes they have the, the hair bands that the, like, the, the kids throw out on, on the ride. And during a race time, there's just clothes and t-shirts and sweatshirts just thrown all over the, all over the mountain. People are just discarding them. <laughs> and uh, we're going to start on the buy and sell side of things. And... Today was another question we asked. As a DVC owner or DVC renter, the biggest misconception I hear about DVC from family or friends when they discover I'm a DVC member or DVC renter is, let me ask you this, what's the first thing that you hear? I, I, I know what you're going to say here, so I, I don't know, I don't want to say that. I'm trying to think if there's anything no, else I want to say. What you normally get, because what I normally what, what, get, what I used to get is don't, mention. don't you go anywhere else? You know, aren't you sick of Disney? Yeah, so that, that's what I've gotten in, in the in the past. I, you know, I, I live here now, so I don't really get it. But when I was living in New Jersey and at the office, and I was going to Disney again, they're like, seriously, you, again, you're going to Disney nowhere else. So maybe the the feedback that I get, and maybe that's because I live in Orlando, and people must have some knowledge of DVC. The in Orlando, the feedback I get immediately, oh, that one doesn't last forever. Mm. Oh, that one doesn't. That doesn't. That has an end date, right? Or something? Does it have a D? Like, that's what I get all the time. Um, so this, I'm going to read some of the responses here. Again, this is trying to like, help you out if you're on the fence about becoming a DBC member or not, or maybe a DBC renter. Um, this says, what if you rent points and something happens? Won't you lose it all? If you rent points, you have to take what you can get. So you end up just staying at the places that are inconvenient to the parks. I mean, I don't know if you want to touch on that. You got a probably a better response. But, you know, none I mean, of that's <clears throat> true, really. Yeah, no, no, none, none of it is true. Um, if, you're, if you're booking last minute, there's a good chance that you might get some. The largest resorts, Old Key West and Saratoga Springs, are typically the last to always rent out or if you're a DVC member they're the last to, to be booked up so they're a little they're not near any of the the parks exactly they're you know walking distance to Disney Springs and Old Key West is a boat ride to Disney Springs but if you look at the whole Disney property like Saratoga Springs and Old Key West are actually like in the middle of the map so while they're not right by any resort they're actually centrally located so I mean a lot of times those are the last ones that are available and they're the last ones that always sell out but you know, if you're flexible, I have a friend who comes down here every single year, and every single year when she goes to book, she stays at Saratoga Springs because that's all that's left, and they absolutely love Saratoga Springs. They, they barely stayed anywhere else. I, I'd say 90, 95% of the time they're at Saratoga, and they absolutely love Saratoga. So I, I, that's the main thing I would say is just like not worried about anything with like the dates and stuff, but just you know, you're going to be stuck with something you don't want if you don't book far in advance. And you, you do have to book a little further out if you're a DVC member. But even if you don't, honestly, the, the stuff that's left over a lot of times is great. Or there's, there's last minute cancellations all the time. So I, I wouldn't be too concerned about that. And then the next one people had, aren't you, old, aren't you too old to want to go to Disney every year as for kids? I mean, there's so many people that come here without kids that are yeah. older. I mean... I mean, they. I mean, they, they. They love everything, but I feel like that crowd also loves Epcot the most. You know, they they come to Epcot. They want to go around the world. They want to, you know, they want to enjoy the pools, the water parks. I. I. Then I have a friend who's actually down here right right now, 
as we're recording this, and he comes down by himself. He's, he's about, I don't know his exact age. He, he's never, he's always been secretive about it for some reason. He, he's about my age, give or take two years. So 23. Thing, single guy, he comes down here multiple times a year. He's, he's down here right now. It actually reminds me I'm supposed to go hang out with him at, at a park sometime this week just to say hello to him. But he's down here right now, comes down a couple times a year by himself. Forget too old, he's like, doesn't have kids, doesn't have a wife. He's here, and he, you know he'll, he'll meet up with people he's met in the Disney community while he's down here. So I mean, yeah, there, there's a lot of great reasons to come here. You don't need kids. You're not too old. <laughs> Disney's for everyone. Do you know Pro- Professor Leisure by chance on uh, X or Twitter? No, I do no, not. I, okay. I don't believe so. So he's Professor uh, Leisure. I mean, I'm not. I know Professor Leisure from Twitter. I mean, I know his, who his wife is. He has at least one daughter, but he's. Like, I feel like he is, like, he, I don't know what he does for a living. That guy is, like, at the parks every day or at the water parks or he's doing something about ranking the water parks. But that guy is the ultimate adult uh, Orlando park expert, I guess, if you will. Now that you mentioned it, there's a guy on my Facebook who got... I don't know him personally. A guy named Brent Dodge. I'm giving him a shout out right here. Uh, at one point, it was a couple of years ago. I remember he, like he had gone to the park every day for like 500 days straight. I, I don't know if it's stopped. Or he, you know, he's kept going and something has happened. But he's a local. He had gone every single day for like 500 days straight. It was something ridiculous. Wow. And there's just there's the people who love the parks and just love going. And you know, if you're if you're a local, you've got an annual pass. I mean, it's free entertainment. You know, it's 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 a great option. Uh, and then uh, this is Nicole Martaccio. Uh, how do you know it's legit? They're all scams. Uh, reply, I do my due diligence and usually rent from the same owner for years when available. That's a renter. Um, Pamela Cunningham, you go to Disney for free. Um, I own a Zimmerman. Don't you get bored going to the same place every year? And I mean, again, you can't get bored here because... There's so many different things that you can do. You can't, I mean, even if you come here one time, it's it's almost impossible to duplicate that exact same trip the next yeah. time. It's, it's, it's impossible. Every, everything is always different. Kind of like our show here. You never know, you never know what's gonna happen and you don't know where you're gonna end up. You can be mentioning random people. Everything is different every time. Kathy Ray Newman, I have had going. friends say again, you're going, shaking my head. My kids were born with DVC, now 26 and 23, owned since 1995. Now when we go, it isn't always for the parks, it's for other things or just sit by the pool. I mean, there you go. I mean, this person has, you know, they've run the whole gamut of DVC. Yeah. I mean, that is, uh, we need to have Kathy <laughs> on our show here. Um and this, this is from Alex. He said, so you were one of those that fell for a timeshare, saw, thought you were smarter than that? Yeah, I mean, you know, timeshares, they have a bad name out there. You know, every situational comedy show that's lasted more than three years, they have some episode that has to do with the timeshare. Um, but yeah, DVC is, we all know that it's, you know, it's not like that if you're an owner or a renter. Um but, uh, yeah, I just wanted to hear some of the misconceptions that you hear because, really, it's one of those things where, like we mentioned last episode about having a wall up about becoming a renter, people have a wall up about becoming an owner. And, I mean, once they break that wall, it just, I mean, you become one of those members that, you know, you create memories for 5, 10, 15, 20 years. And you just, it's one of those things where you just can't imagine your life without DVC because it's just part of your you know, what you do. You, again, you just had me flashback. I, I know I've mentioned this on the show in the past. My first DVC memory really is my son waking up at Animal Kingdom with the Savannah View room. He was like two years old and, you know, pointing to the pointing to the balcony but while he was still in his little crib or whatever and saying, Mommy, moo, because he knew that there were the Yank Holy Cattle outside. And now that same Mommy Moo kid is driving and gonna be, you know, going his junior year of high school and looking at colleges. And meanwhile, I'm picturing the first DVC experience with him was him with the Savannah. You know, that was before my my small my youngest one was even born. You know, and that's he's gone through that whole gamut of everything. He stayed at a bunch bunch of different resorts. He's been all over the place, and every experience has been different. Well, I mean, we, I mean, we, I mean, it's, I mean, if you live here, yeah, if you have kids, especially if you live here. When your kids are young, I mean, we we have it. Uh, it's a nice, it's a nice thing to uh, experience. Yeah, and again, when I, I bought in, I was back in New Jersey, and we, we were coming down 
when we first bought it, I think we were coming down, you know, once a year. And then as we bought DVC and kept adding on, like before we moved down here, I was coming down here three times a year. Because I, I, I was sitting there going, I, my rooms are already paid off. I've got an annual pass. So all I've got to pay for is airfare and, you know, and any food we eat down here. And truthfully, we're not big, expensive foodies, especially when you have the, the little kids. I'm going, you know, do I want to go to Aruba and it's going to cost my family $5,000? Or I could go down to Disney again. My room's paid for, ticket, everything, oh, entertainment's paid for. And, you know, I, I could get a deal on the airfare for, you know, $600 round trip for all of us. Well, why the heck am I going to go to Aruba for four grand? $600, I'm going to go to Disney, and I know I'm going to have a great time, and I know everything's going to be clean, and I know when we go to the bathrooms in the parks, they're going to have the, the little urinals so my kid can go to the bathroom by himself. You know, it's everything is geared towards families, and, you know, Aruba is an awesome place to go to, but, you know, it's like when this is so much cheaper, and, you know, you know you're locked in, and you, you know you're going to have a good time, and it's, it's, it's hard to go other places because, you know, you, you know everything is safe and kind of like perfect in the Disney bubble. I don't think I've ever heard anyone. I mean, I like how you just throw in one of the reasons. The urinals? It was the, I think I mentioned on the, on the shows, it, it's, you know, as an adult, as, as, a, as a person who has kids, you know, you have boys, especially as, as a boy dad, you sit there and you appreciate stuff like that. You know, you know, who the hell cares about urinals? When you've got a little two-year-old or something, three-year-old, and you're like, he can walk up and there's a little urinal just for him. You're like, this is great. You know, this stuff is a lot of times lower. They've got like a, a, a lowered blower that the kids can use. I'm like, it's little stuff like that that just makes it feel special and like they, they care about kids and families. It's, it's, it's a little silly thing with a little urinal, but it's, it's very helpful when you've got little boys. And now we're going to transition from you. How do you, how do you transition from this? Of you. Here we go. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Come here, I'm gonna eat you! Get in my belly! Speaking of urinals, we're back at Flo's. <laughs> we're at Flo's Via Cafe in California Adventure. Uh, right now, you know, we went through the somewhat lame peach pie from two weeks ago. That This time we got the Flo's Classic Shake. So it's a, a vanilla chocolate strawberry shake, one of them, topped with road gravel which is just end up like kind of like ground up Oreos on top of it for $6.79. Uh, they also serve it in a souvenir glass for $15.79, but we did not get the souvenir glass. It was a good milkshake with some Oreos dumped on top, literally nothing special. I mean, honestly, it's something you could have got anywhere else nearby. And it's just served in like a little like plastic Dixie cup almost, like, or like a solo cup, but clear. So nothing, nothing was really like special about it. I'll give it a 7.5 in, in terms you know, of, of the taste for on the milkshake scale, but honestly, I, I would not get this again. I, I find it to be a little bit of a waste. Uh, it was basic, honestly, just like the peach pie. The, the Grand Californian had some really, really good food that we've had, and lots of different snack items and stuff, but the, the two things we had at Flo's were both underwhelming for us. And now we're on to the DVC dash rental side of things, and we're back to featured resort series. Yeah, we're, we're getting a lot of positive feedback on the featured resorts, so we're gonna continue doing them periodically. I, I don't do them too many like in a row. I'll, I'll like pepper them in, space them out a little bit. Today we are gonna do Disney's Riviera, which is probably the least known Disney resort as it's the newest construction at Walt Disney World. Uh, it's European Riviera inspiration, so it draws from the elegance and charm of the European Riviera from both France and Italy. As somebody who went to France and Italy last year, I absolutely, I, I, I love the way it's designed. When you're sitting outside, they'll pump music in and it's, it's kind of has that, normally it's, um, a lot of times it's like, a, a, sorry, instrumental music, but it's, it's, it, it reminds you of being like in Europe, not no words, but just being in Europe. Uh, really great. It's on the Skyliner, so you've got the Skyliner access, so you can take the Skyliner over to Epcot or Hollywood Studios. Um, they've got character experiences at, at the resort as well. Um, if you do the dining option, at the character dining at Topolino's, they've got Mickey Mouse, Minnie Mouse, Donald Duck, and Daisy Duck in stylish European attire. I, I have not done Topolino's yet. It's one of those ones that I keep hearing great things about Topolino's and I want to check it out. It's a little on the expensive side, but I, I do want to go there. Just haven't made it yet. Um, that followed up on that one was, it says that the European inspired dining at Topolino's. 
Uh, the resort also offers um, dining at Le Petit Cafe for coffee and pastries, Primo Piatto for casual meals. We absolutely loved Primo Piatto. We've gone there um, twice now for breakfast, and I've done a, a few reviews on them in the past. I don't know exactly what episode they were, but they've had really, really good uh, breakfast at Primo Piatto, inexpensive, and that's also where they have the like the chocolate chip like banana bread. So really been happy with Primo Piatto for less expensive options. Um, it's one of the it's the only it's one of the only resorts. It's, it, at, at this moment, it's the only resort that has the tower studio, which means that you know, it, can, it can sleep two, the studio that sleeps two. When the new Polynesian is going to be built, they're going to have something called a duo studio, which is the same exact thing. They're going to have a, just two in the room for less expensive options. Um, and this, this features a queen-size bed, kitchenette, and balcony with scenic views. Again, this is only offered here, less expensive if you've got a, a room just needed for two people. So cool option to have. That's the only one right now, except when Polly comes online. Another great option, another cool thing is that Riviera has, is the art collection at Riviera. This has by far the most artwork I've seen in any Disney resort, um, around like the lobby, through the hallways, and even in the rooms. Tons of Disney artwork in there, um, with paintings, sculptures, other decorative elements. Absolutely loved staying at Riviera with some of the cool Disney artwork in there. Under recreation activities, um, they've got the fitness centers, jogging trails, movie screenings under the stars. My sons absolutely love playing bocce there. Um, that's right outside of Primo Piatto. And that's also the, one of the places that they, they pump in the music. So my, you, you, we get to, we'll sit down sometimes. There's some, um, some benches there. My wife and I will get a gelato right by the pool. We'll sit there and let the boys just play bocce and they've got the Italian and, again, Riviera-inspired music playing in the background. Really, really nice scene. Uh, also, they've got a lot of stuff right around there. They've got, like, large um, chess pieces for people to play with. There's lots of, like, outdoor, outdoor play activity right there. Um, another great thing, again, it's going with the Skyliner. It's just the proximity to the parks. Super close to Epcot. Uh, Hollywood Studios is a little bit further. But, I mean, I, taking the Skyliner itself is is just fun also. So really, really nice option to be on the Skyliner with access to both parks, super easy. And uh, one thing I do want to add on here that's a lot of people don't mention is that if you are not staying here, this is a very, very hard par uh, resort to park at. Like they really don't let you park and go get food or, or you know, do anything. Like you, you have to be staying here. They are really, really tight on guests. So is this from your experience or? From a lot of stuff. Something must have happened. No, 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 no. There's, there's no story. Come on. No, no. It's stuff. I needed to go stuff, there and use the urinal or stuff, something. Stuff, stuff I've read online about how, how hard it is. Um, once my my son, his his friend was staying at there. It was for her birthday. And they had a bunch of people over. And we they were actually pretty cool with that because we knew exactly what room they were staying at. But they were just like, she was having a couple friends over to like go in the pool and hang around, around the resort and everything. And they, we, once we gave the, the name and the phone number, they didn't have a problem letting us in. They, they, they would not have let us in if we did not have all that information. But uh, just like Beach Club, Bay Lake Tower, and Riviera, I think are the three toughest resorts to park at you know, to, to get through security if you're not staying there. Because again, they, 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 a lot of people want to park close and then like try to hop on a mode of transportation and go to the parks. They don't want to do that because they want to make sure that they have plenty of room for the people who are, you know, staying there to park their cars. So they're, they're relatively strict. But yeah, Riviera is one of the strict, strictest as well. So definitely be careful about that. And I mean, I don't know why, but when I think of resorts, like if you were to come here on a vacation and you weren't going to go to the parks, mm -hmm. Riviera and Copper Creek are the, on the top of my list for me. Ooh. I mean, uh, and I like Riviera, like when you're at the pool and then you see the water and then you can see Caribbean Beach. And I mean, it's it's just a nice, rela I mean, I feel like you're at, I don't know, it just feels nice and relaxing. Like you can just oh, get yeah. at the pool there. Yeah, I, I, I agree. The Skyliner. Yeah, that's what I was, I was going to mention. Hop on the Skyliner. You've got the great views from the Skyliner. They'll take you over to the Beach Club boardwalk area where you can walk around those resorts. And plus, you've got all the food options and the entertainment of the boardwalk easily accessible from the Skyliner. So, yeah, if you're not planning on going to the parks, Riviera is a great choice. I put, yeah, I put, to me, that's number one. I don't know why. I have Copper Creek number two. I think it's a great resort <laughs> to just, you know, enjoy. But, um, but yeah, I think it's a, it's a, it's a nice resort. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, that's all I have. That's all you have? Yeah, it's 
I'm going to get a little short today. I'm not sure. It might be the same as usual. Who knows? We went on a tangent about urinals, which nobody was expecting. So, yay, the end of that. We'll see you next week. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Please always, we, pre we appreciate you all. If anything you want to add in the comments, preferably that's not urinal related, feel free to add in the comments. Or you know what, if you've got a little boy and you appreciate the urinals, let us know as well. But thank you so much for watching.